Hey Ratbags, today I'm going to show you every single boss in Small Lands as of its early access launch. There are six bosses, well five and plus one sub boss, although the devs have stated that there's two sub bosses, but I couldn't really tell which was the sub boss and which was a real one. Anyway, I've got their health pools, I'll tell you exactly how much health they've got, give you tips on about facing them and everything that they unlock as well. Find it useful, please leave a like, make sure you subscribe for even more Small Land gameplay guides and let's go. So a sub boss not technically listed on the map is the Wasp Queen. It's only got 400 health and you'll find it towards the northeast, underneath one of the picnic tables with boxes and bottle caps. You can wander up far and wide sometimes, so don't be surprised if it's not directly under there. Have a little scout around, but it should always come pretty much back. It's got poison, of course, resistance against, and hammer damage as well. Relatively low health, only 400, that's why it's classed as a sub boss. Much like the Black Hornet later on, it also will do poison, edged and poison damage against you, so you've got to make sure you've got something along them lines to keep you protected. Again, the B armor is probably going to be your best bet. Although in terms of poison resistance, it's definitely not as resistant against poison as the Albino Spider or the Black Hornet. It did get glitched a couple of times, I ended up using a cheat just to kill it and not taking damage as I wanted to get this video quickly done and dusted, but you can see the drops it does drop. It does drop a wasp head and so far I've not found a use for it. I'm guessing it's going to be something later on, but as of the actual full launch, the only thing I haven't missing is something from the stonecutters table that I still haven't unlocked and it didn't give me any new recipe with the wasp head. So keep it for sure till later, I'm sure it will come useful for some sort of weapon or armour set in the future. So with the reward unknown, I would say actually avoid taking this guy on until a bit later, go and do the rhino beetle first. So even if you haven't got the B armor set, you might get away with maybe even stone, as long as you've got really a ton of heals. And so yeah, as long as you're not using hammers, use any of the other weapons. Maybe range would be better to run around the table, get some distance away from it so it doesn't sting you, but it is a sub boss, so it shouldn't be as hard as obviously some of the next ones I'm gonna show you. The Rhino Beetle to the south is what you need once you've spoken to Scardi. This will unlock the Gecko treat so that you can now tame geckos. It's resistant against piercing, so don't use bow and arrows or spears. It's got a health pool of 550, subject to change of course while in early access, but that does mean you need to hit 550 points of damage. Its charge attack there does do blunt as well as piercing, but its stump attack also does blunt. So I think you're better off wearing an armor set that has blunt resistance. Currently there's only two armor sets that give that. Now Scardi does craft the primal set, so obviously this might be the one you should aim for. And I would say this is the best bet as well because it gives you protection against the cold. So chances are you'll be taking on this boss maybe just before the first winter hits. All the materials required you can find at the beach, killing lots of geckos and maybe some of the wasps, and you should be able to get all the insect fur, the bones and herptile hide you need. And you don't even have to bother with a tannery because it's herptile hide, not leather, so you don't have to convert any of it. Now slim chance, but you might have actually completely ignored that NPC and that boss never found it. So the Formic armor set is also very good. Of course it is much more upgraded than the Primal, it's got better protection stats, but it is the only other set that gives direct protection against blunt damage. But it's significantly more advanced and much more expensive to craft the materials needed to make it. In terms of weapons, so we already know that you don't use your bow and arrow, you can pretty much do what you want, either swords or hammers, whatever you feel custom with, whatever you've been getting used to. Obviously with the sword you are going to do faster damage, and it does move pretty sprightly considering its size. Especially if you're trying to dodge out of way it's charge, you might want to keep your stamina up so that you can move around. So yeah, sword might be the best bet. But equally, you can go ahead and use a hammer if you really wanted to as well. Just make sure it's at least a stone hammer. Certainly don't go try and attack this with just a wooden sword and a wooden club. Bring three or four healing potions on you or a bunch of patches and it's not really that hard. Just take the hits. You can see I'm not even wearing the right armor. So like I said, it's only if you really are struggling, you may want to consider getting them armor sets first before taking it on. Good thing about this boss fight, there shouldn't be too many other creatures nearby. I certainly wouldn't take your creature to face off against it though, as you might end up getting it squished in between. Although I didn't pay too much attention to my actual grasshopper. 
A lot of the strong attacks aren't worth your time because they take too much of your stamina to use up. But later on, once you get more advanced weapons, it's a lot easier and better to use some of them. But for now, I think that the either flint sword is probably going to be good enough just to use the normal attack. And there you go, the rhino split horn. So a bit of a peculiar one, the next two bosses have both got 650 health, they're both giant spiders. The first one is the Matriarch, but you won't get a ping for its location until you've spoken to Tahula in the mangroves all the way over to the southeast island. And it's not the hardest creatures to face off against, but it does help unlock the last decent armour set, like the last best armour set, which is the healer set. It's a bit weird, you'll probably come across it beforehand. So obviously the Matriarch is poisonous and it's resistant against poison. It's also resistant against piercing, so no bows and no spears, which means you can use either your swords or hammers to take it on. Armors wise, it does edge damage and of course poison, so you need to find some armor. Usually the B armor might be a good one, but we'll cover that in a second when I talk more about the Albino Spider. So it will poison you of course, and yes, you will need maybe at least one poison antidote, but I reckon with enough healing items, you might just be able to get away from it. Thankfully, none of the baby spiderlings will attack you while you're fighting it, at least not the first time that I tried it on anyway. And this is a place that you can get silk if you go ahead and defeat it. So yeah, keep the actual spider eye for a long time until you find Tahula, and then that should then unlock the armor, as well as the great healing potion and the jester potion. The jester potion will heal you, but it does take away some of your comfort level when you take it. The healer set is one of the best in the game, it's also one of the most grindiest, as you need to kill a ton of toads to make it. So I'm a little bit confused about the locations and where you find it. It's at the heart of the forest, you'll come across it probably first, but you don't actually get the prompt to go and kill it until you find one of the last NPCs, as the mangrove area is definitely one of the late game areas at the moment. But yeah, most likely the boss you'll come across first, possibly, but yeah, avoid it until you get a bit stronger. Okay, moving on to the albino spider, which has pretty much the same stats as the matriarch and will do the same sort of damage and has the same protections. So I'd still say bring more poison resistance potions because it's in a much dangerous area. You have to fight off obviously black widows and wolf spiders as well. So you probably are going to get poisoned on the way. So yeah, definitely bring a few. But yeah, same thing. Don't use poison or piercing damage against this. So no bows, no spears. Again, by this point, you probably have got more advanced tools and weapons. So either flint or maybe even chitin to take it on, I would recommend. Or at the very least, a stone hammer. Of course, it does do the poison damage, but it also does edge damage too. So considering the level of it, the bee armor or the chitin armor is probably going to be your best bet, as it offers more protection overall than the chitin. So I would really try and aim to get the bee armor set before taking on the spider. As you can see, that's what I was wearing. The only other set that does give extra protection against edge is the iron wing, and you're probably not going to have access to that by now. Again, it's a much later game armor. In fact, one of the last ones you'll craft. B armor, I don't think that's out of the realms. You just need a loom to make the textile patches. It does mean you do require some silk, but as you should be exploring the swamp for a good amount of time, hopefully you've built up the 10 silk needed to craft the loom, and you'll need an additional 15 textile patches. So that's 15 silk to craft the rest of the set. And the chitin shouldn't be too hard to get hold of again. You can get some from drops and wasps, and you'll also need to get some insect wings from killing some of the damselflies, or maybe rare chance of getting them for bees and wasps. In fact, probably aim to get the bee heads first, and you might get lucky to get some chitin and the wings as well, as you are gonna need three of the bee heads. I would say you definitely wanna have either flint or chitin weapons to go and take this one on, certainly not using just wood or some of the stone things like the stone hammer. But again, you will need probably some more silk to go ahead and make the chitin stuff. As you can see, I wasn't having a good time using just a stone hammer here. It has got quite a wide reach. It will pounce on you quite persistently. And then it does this kind of ferocious attack. So that's the one that you really want to save up your dodges for and get out of the way. It does another small attack, but that's not so bad. It really is the pounce that you need to make sure you've got a stamina to get out of the way of. Thankfully, the poison attacks don't stack, but your resistances should do, especially if you're taking either a lesser and then an antidote. But definitely go for the resistance ones. There's no point taking an antidote that will cure all of your poison, only to get bit two seconds later. So all that same advice, bear in mind for the Matriarch Spider as well. Although it did seem like this done a lot more variety of attacks. But all in all, it still only took around two, maybe minutes, three minutes to actually complete. 
what I find with all the bosses is that you just got to keep wailing on them and have plenty of heals. There's no real definitive boss that's going to wipe you out in one hit until much later. Of course with the spider's eye you can now go ahead and give it to Lysandra and get yourself the wolf spider pet. Next up it's the black hornet and this is over all the way in the northwest. Go and speak to Nock and they'll give you the tip and location of where it is. So the Black Hornet's a real bad one, it's got 700 health and it's got three different types of damage it does. It does do edged and piercing damage on you as well as poison, so a triple whammy. So as long as you're not wearing the Formic set or the Primal set, you're pretty much good to go as you're going to get protection some way or another with all the rest, as they all offer either edged or piercing. Fun fact, for poison builds, by the time you get to the end of the game, the last arm set that you'll probably unlock is the healer set, and this does give you some protection against poison. It is the only set that gives you protection against poison, but I wouldn't wait until then to take on any of the poisonous creatures. It's such a grind to get, you have to go to Tahula, obviously all the way over into the swamps and mangroves area, kill like 10 or 12 toads possibly to get everything you need to craft it and much more. So what else do you need? I would say yes, a B armor set or maybe even the iron wing set that you actually get from Nock. Basically, once you've crafted the armor, then she'll give you the recipe or tell you to go and get a wing from this and this will give you the wings that I'm currently wearing right now. It'll be the second wing set you'll probably get after the bees and it doesn't really offer any other alternatives. So what I'm saying is don't be in too much of a rush to go and kill the Black Hornet just to go ahead and get a second wing set as it offers no benefits over the B set just yet. If you was really struggling against it I would probably go with the Silk Weave set after exploring the swamp it shouldn't be too hard to go ahead and get this one. If only to have that extra movement speed so you can dodge out of the way but otherwise the B armor set is still really good. Pretty much offers the same protection as the silk wing set, is easier to craft and you can dodge out the way using your wings if you really need to. It will do more or less the same as poison damage as the albino spider and it's got the same sort of attacks where it does this swipe roly poly attack and then you saw earlier the charge one. So as long as you've got three resistance potions and maybe an antidote potion to take at the very end, you're good to go. But ideally you'll be using ranged weapons to give yourself a really good chance of doing damage from afar. Spears will probably be also good. Maybe hammers too slow because it does dart around. And try not to use blades or swords as edge damage it has got resistance to. You only need one of the sapphire wings to go ahead and make the wings that you need for your armor set. The iron wing one. They've got no other benefits in the game just yet, so unless you're making extra sets for anyone else, that's all you'll need to come face this boss against. Last thing I will add though, this is a pretty dangerous area, and flies can swarm you quite easily, so don't take it for granted it's going to be easy getting here, especially getting up on top of the rubbish pile where you'll actually face off against it. There can be sometimes two spawns of these as well, I have also found one near or around a tree. I don't know if that was a mistake during some of the early testing before the game came out, but yeah, I've definitely seen one near one of the trees close by, so that might have just been a glitch. And last top tip, with arrows I've found that it's not worth going all to the trouble of getting iron. Either the fire or the flint pretty much do similar damage types and the iron doesn't really do much more either. So don't waste any of your scraps on the long arrows which are the iron ones. So we're already at the last of the bosses. This is the Stag King Beetle. You'll find it in the Southeast Island, pretty much in the mangroves underneath the ruined staircase. It's giant, it's got the largest health pool by far, nearly double some of the others at 1050. Just like the other beetles, don't be using your bows or spears. You're gonna need something stronger like a hammer or maybe edged weapons. Just like the rhino, this creature does piercing as well as blunt damage. I do believe it's on all of its attacks. It pretty much has the same sort of set, although them pincers are quite much larger and have got definitely a bigger radius of effect. This was one of the only creatures me and Spicy, shout out to him for helping me out in a lot of these videos and stuff, actually died to the first time we tried taking it on because they were doing quite a bit of damage with them pincers. And bearing in mind we had some of the best gear going as well. It's also surrounded by such a dangerous area with tons of hornets and more. You'll get the ancient clover seal, you give it back to the elder, and that's how you go ahead and get the recipe to get the damselfly. 
So absolutely you are probably going to need the Formic armor set or maybe even the Bone armor set with this one. The Formic protects against blunt and the Bone will protect against piercing. It will just be whatever you can really craft out of the two. The Iron Wing suit is good for taking on obviously lots of creatures as it has got the highest protection in the game. But it is not as good for piercing or blunt damage, it actually protects more against edge damage. But just bring a ton of healing items with you and maybe make a temporary base there as it's pretty hard to get to because all on that island there are no trees that you can take over as a base as far as I know. I'm pretty sure we're going to get a lot more bosses added but as of launch that is all of the bosses you will encounter and face and what rewards you get for defeating them. If you found that useful do please go and check out the rest of my gameplay and guides and come see me do 100 days of small land on my brand new channel JPG 100 days. Until next time Ratbags, laters!